G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this video is a bit of an exploration of 3D printing through the eyes of a noob. Now I need to first and foremost disclaim that I in no way claim to be an expert, but I'm trying 3D printing for the first time. I've had my 3D printer for a little over a week and I'm really excited to show you guys some of the stuff I've made, mistakes and all, but some of the results have actually blown me away. I'm not including this in that. This was the first thing I've made. It's, it didn't blow me away, but it's cool. Really one of the most helpful things I've found is seeking help and advice elsewhere. One of the places I've done that is other YouTube channels and I recommend Make Anything and Maker's Muse. I'll put uh, the link to those in the description and go check them out. And the other thing I've found really helpful is having experts I can actually talk to and ask questions about and my experts on hand have been the people who sold me my 3D printer. I got the Flash Forge Guider 2S which I am absolutely in love with. There are a few quirks that I'm learning about it but all in all I'm really satisfied with it and I bought it from the people over at the 3D Printer Superstore in Melbourne. They sell all around Australia and this is not a paid promotion or anything but I've just really enjoyed learning from these people and buying from these people so I can absolutely recommend them to you fellow Aussies out there. They've actually agreed to set up a coupon code for you guys who want to get into 3D printing of everything in the Flash Forge catalog and this includes printers, filaments and spare parts. There are only 30 of these coupons available and it's limited to one per customer so if you want to use it get in quick. So like I mentioned this was my first ever print and the stupid thing that I did in hindsight I printed on uh, ABS settings without realizing I'm using PLA filament. It sort of got a little melty, I guess, and warped it. So there's my first mistake. The second mistake was jumping in a little too deep, a little too quickly. I thought I'd try and print a train for my son and I tweaked settings. That's a bad idea, just in general. If you don't know what the settings are or what they do, don't do that because this is what my first train looks like. <laughs> yeah, I'm an idiot. On to attempt number two. Got a little further. But that's okay because with attempt number three, it was about the same, just a little bit less horrible. By this stage, I knew I was doing something wrong. So I rang Mark from 3D Printer Superstore and he just guided me through the process of setting up. It's actually not that hard, but first of all, don't change default settings. And second, just make sure to pay careful attention to the calibration process because there were two things I didn't really properly carefully do. First is level the bed. And the second is calibrate the extruder where the filament comes out of the end there. It's it's actually not that hard. I'm just an idiot. So you probably will have less problems than I had. <laughs> Mistakes aside, then I finally had a successful print. Now, mostly successful because as you can see, half of the wheels are successful and the other half, one, two, three, are a little flimsy. And I think because three of them sort of came loose. That said, it didn't really matter to my son because I could clip on the wheels. I gave it to him and he was absolutely over the moon, especially because I had described my 3D printer as a toy maker. Best dad ever, right? <laughs> I was pretty happy with how this turned out and uh, I thought I'd go ahead and make a carriage for it. And this is where I had my first really successful print. It actually looks fantastic, but I uh, forgot that I resized the train to be a little bit smaller. So point is I made a train. That was my first experiment and I felt ready then to move on to some more artsy stuff, which is really what I got the 3D printer for. And hopefully why some of you are watching this are interested in what I do with it in the future because the main reason I got my 3D printer is to print the things I sculpt in VR. Those are usually going to be figures or more humanoid looking things. So I downloaded this uh, freely available model of the Hulk and this is my first ever Hulk print, teeny tiny little Hulk print. This is on default settings of a low resolution. Now you'll see that it's got these little weird tree looking things on it and these are just called supports and it helps the printer print from a place where otherwise it would print on midair. Let's clean up this model and I will say that I have with every model I've printed so far kept the cleanup for this very video. They seem to break away pretty easily. They're printed to be like barely connected. Last but not least I printed what's called a raft which is what his feet are on and that too is supposed to just peel away. And ah. Uh, Look at that. This is the result. And uh, it looks pretty cool. Look at him. And once again, this is low resolution. Now I printed this dude in about 40 minutes. And then just to compare my different result, I printed the same thing in a high resolution. And this took about two, about two hours. 
All right, let's remove these supports. And here there are a direct comparison between low resolution and high resolution. Once again, they look a little fuzzy, a little furry, which if I were to spend five or 10 minutes, I could clean that up well and good. But as you can see, the resolution on the left, the low resolution, you can see all the lines on the body. Now, it's actually not that prominent, especially for such a small print. I would consider this a pretty high quality print. However, you can see a drastic difference comparing. It's night and day. This high resolution print just looks absolutely gorgeous. You can see the musculature and the anatomy of this really tiny figure. Like keep in mind my, my big fat hands. Sorry, I'm an owl biter. Ignore that. Gross. But this dude looks fantastic. You can even see some facial details in there. And uh, after a bit of cleanup and a prime and a paint, you could really make this dude look like any super detailed tabletop figurine. And that's one of the things I'd love to try out one day is building my own little tabletop army. I don't know, leave your suggestions in the comments down below what you think I should do with my 3D printer. So moving on, I wanted to print the same Hulk model, but blown up to be, I don't know, maybe a, a foot high. Now, like my previous Hulk attempt, I'd thought I'd print a first Hulk in low resolution first, and this is my first attempt. What happened here is the supports that were under the uh, the left arm of the Hulk were just a little too flimsy, and when this arm was being printed, the weight was so much that it just sort of snapped, and this is what happens when it tries to print and there's nothing underneath. So that's one for the bin. Giant Hulk attempt two was almost a success, and let's just bring it in with this side first. Oh look, it looks so good. It looks almost like a completed print. Hooray us, but no. Unfortunately, the support problem was the same on the left because I came back and added more supports to this arm here, and uh, obviously I didn't know what would happen with the other arm, but turns out I'm just sort of too light with my support. Now, if I just rip this away, I think it's probably worth keeping even if just for comparison between the print of this and a high resolution one. And there he is with uh, a little bit of cleanup. It just looks absolutely fantastic. And it's really quite impressive to hold and sort of be like, hey, I pretty printed this thing. Like, look at this. So cool. But as with our other low resolution friend, you can see the, the lines somewhat. Uh, there's a lot more detail here, of course, because we have a much bigger print. But speaking of a lot more detail, it was then I uh, decided to once again up the ante like I did with our miniature miniature. And this is a high resolution print. This is 0.1 millimeters. And again, I haven't done the cleanup for this. There's a bit of webbing, which apparently wouldn't be the case if I uh, turn the temperature of the nozzle down and bring the retract in a little bit so I'm just still learning I'm gonna flash forward through some of the cleanup here and uh, we'll pull a direct comparison between the two This is, as a print, absolutely incredible. All of the detail is preserved here. I did go back, of course, and strengthen those supports, but the result is something that is just really well printed and feels really strong too. I mean, it's certainly fitting. It is the Hulk after all. He better be pretty damn strong. This low resolution print took uh, about 24 hours, whereas this high resolution 0.1 millimeter print took over 57 hours. That being said, if it's the sort of thing where you're happy to leave it in the background, it's just really satisfying. I thought I'd just take a moment to show you the resolution comparison. This is the low resolution print. As you can still see, it's very detailed. But again, of course, by comparison, we have the high resolution print, which is far and away more impressive. Especially, if I find like the back and this area here, just with all the depth, just really cool. And because I printed with a green filament, were I to paint this fella, it would just, I assume, be a more simple and straightforward process. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you would care to see me do a video painting this guy, making him as detailed and intricately and well painted as possible. It's a really cool statue, but I didn't design it. So uh, I can't take credit for that. This was my landmark print. This is the most complex and awesome print I've done so far. However, there are a couple more that I wanted to bring out and show you. Now this little dude here is called a Benchy. This is a benchmark boat print. I guess it's just to sort of test out how your printer prints various kinds of surfaces and overhangs and, and structures. Then we have this, oh man, that's sort of satisfying. Ah. Then we have this, I guess you could call this a stress test 
print. And this is a model which, when printed, challenges a bunch of different functions of the printer. This is called a bridging test, where it tests how it can bridge between two parts of a print without support underneath. And then I printed two little trinkets, because what's the point of having a 3D printer if you can't make some toys? First we have a whistle. I have not used this whistle before, but apparently it's a functioning 3D printed whistle. Oh my god! Ah! There, there you go. That's practical. And it's even got like a hole for a lanyard. So if you're a if you're a coach of some sort of sport, you can have a you can print your own whistle. But you didn't know that. And then we have what is called apparently an iris box. I have not used this, but the idea is that when you uh, loosen the little bits clipping on the bottom here, the idea is that it's printed in itself a completely functional box that closes and opens based on twisting the base. Ah, oh, ah, oh. progress clicks, I hope. Ah, oh my God, ah, look at that. Looks like uh, the orifice of an alien. Hey look, it's my, it's my wedding ring holder. <laughs> there are infinite uh, little gadgets and, and practical and l more playful models that you can download. I recommend Thingiverse.com. There's definitely by far and away the largest community of makers sharing their files there, including all the stuff that I've downloaded here today. Look at this! Oh my god, that's so cool! So I must say, I feel like this has been a pretty productive week as far as 3D printing goes, but none of this was created by me. I want to know what you think I should make, and to make it, I'm probably going to need some more filament because I've used a lot, but it's not that I don't have more left, it's mainly that I want a lot. And I want to be able to make anything in any colour ever. So I'm going to head over to the 3D Printer Superstore now and go get some more filament. Oh hi Mark! Back already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, I actually came for more uh, green filament. Well you used all the filament you already had. Yeah pretty much, I made this whole kiz like huge, it's like this big. Don't mean to brag, but uh, yeah. Don't mean to brag. That doesn't sound very big. Have you seen the? Yeah, have you seen the Hulk we've got here? That's a Hulk. <laughs> How many of these do, would you need to do one of those? Yeah, you might need a little bit more filament than that. That's a small roll you've got there. Enjoy your filament. Have a good day. Thanks, man. possession of uh, a fairly obscene quantity of, uh, of filament, both PLA and ABS and uh, UV filament. So uh, I can make a huge amount of things now. Really what it is, is up to my imagination and your suggestions. Let me know in the comments down below in this video what you think I should make with my 3D printer. Practical, artistic, I want to know what you guys want to see because I want to get some ideas for what I can create because really there's a lot I could make here. In the meantime, however, I feel like I'm obligated to uh, make up for my fairly abysmal toy train for my toddler. So uh, I actually printed this slab that contains four equally sized proportionate trains. And I even built a bunch of track. Look at this, one train at a time. Oh, and this carriage is the right size too. Caboose at the back. Aha! 
Choo choo! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. A reminder once again to you Aussies out there who want to get into 3D printing, go to 3D Printer Superstore. Once again, the details of that discount are in the description. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and you want to see more of this 3D printing stuff and subscribe to Joy with Jazza for more fun with art and creativity. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time... Exterminate! Exterminate! Oh, he found me! He found me! Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.